Welcome to the Daybreak with Jeff Slakey podcast. I'm so happy you found us. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this with your circle of influence. It's a collection of the interviews, news, and conversation during Daybreak with Jeff Slakey on iFiber One News Radio, KMAS, weekdays from 6 to 9. Well, Friday morning is upon us here, the seventh day of the eighth month, as we welcome in Spencer Hughes. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Good morning. It really is Friday, isn't it? It is Friday. Uh, waking up uh, this week, it was, uh, I mean, it kind of ran the whole gambit weather-wise. And I don't know about you, but it's just a kind of a weird feel to the end of the week for some reason. It really is. The clouds, it was one from blue skies yesterday to really dark, ominous skies. I thought the sky was going to rip apart with rain, but at least where we were, it didn't. But really, really dark skies. Yeah, we had some sprinkles here and there. Uh, today on the show, some local news conversation, COVID updates, of course, and primary election news and more. Since our report yesterday, Mason County Public Health was notified of 13 additional Mason County residents that tested positive for COVID-19, bringing the total now to 214 positive cases in the county. Mason County Public Health continuing contact interviews, and when a positive case completes their isolation period and is released by local public health, they can return to work and normal activities. There's now one resident hospitalized in Mason County, two outside, and there are 49 active cases. That's up five from yesterday. If you're showing symptoms for COVID-19, early testing is encouraged. Please reach out to the Respiratory Illness Triage Line at 360-427-3615, and they'll help you out trying to schedule an appointment at Mason Health drive through COVID-19 Testing Center. Governor Jay Inslee has announced how visitors may return to nursing homes and other long-term care facilities during the COVID-19 pandemic. The state is issuing a four-phase guideline on visitation that encourages outdoor meetings and correlates with the governor's four-phase county reopening plan. Nearly all care facilities in the state are in the first phase for visitation, which allows for compassionate, window, remote, and outdoor visits. Washington State has had more than 60,000 confirmed coronavirus cases since the start of the pandemic and more than 1,620 deaths. State authorities said earlier this week that roughly 10% of virus cases are linked to long-term care facilities, but more than half of the fatalities are associated with such operations. You know, just like anything we're dealing with now, the it's important for these folks in these centers who have already in healthy environments are kind of hold off from society in a sense, you know, there's Mm -hmm. a majority of countries, I believe across the world that do it different than what America does as the population ages, they tend to move back in home with the families for a larger family structure, whereas in America, uh, for whatever reason, over the years, we've um, flipped that. And as the population ages, they are uh, moved to facilities like this. And so already, you know, you're you're having that. Mm -hmm. Now we've got COVID. And these poor folks, in many cases, have not seen, um, other than FaceTime, I guess, family members in five months or better. And so I'm, I'm really interested to learning a little bit. I mean, I, I think I understand what an outdoor visit would be. I understand, I think what remote and window would be, but I wonder what they're considering for a compassionate visit, probably immediate family members who, who have been rapid tested maybe. And it uh, could be, I don't know, but you know what I'm saying about the, um, just being not part of the, not being part of a society and as everything is locked down right now, that's a, that's a tough one too. It really is. It is one of the tougher obstacles we've had to face with this. The race for the Washington's 10th congressional district, certain to be between two female Democrats, but one of the two is still undetermined. Ballots in the uh, vote by mail primary continue to arrive With the announcement of Representative Heck's retirement from Congress, the open seat drew 19 candidates. The district includes most of Pierce and Thurston counties, state capital of Olympia, and parts of Mason County, the city of Shelton. Former Tacoma Mayor Marilyn Strickland advancing to November. 
and Democratic state lawmaker Beth Dolio and former state lawmaker Christine Reeves vying for the number two spot. Dolio at 15 percent, Reeves at 13. More ballot results will be counted and out tonight around six o'clock throughout the state. It's been nearly a week since federal officers withdrew from guarding Portland's federal courthouse during nightly protests, but a large fence they installed is still there, and city officials say it remains illegal. The city of Portland continues to impose a $500 fine every 15 minutes for the fence. It's been erected in the public right-of-way without a permit around the Marco Hatfield United States Courthouse. As of noon Wednesday, the fine hit $584,000. Now, where's this fine going to? Is this going to Homeland Security? Do you think really they're going to pay Portland? Oh, man, we better get... Oh, no, it's 14 minutes, 58, 59, 15 minutes. That's another another $500 fine. We got to get this fence down. They have an Apple Watch app just for reminding them of how much the fine is. I mean, they were taking peaceful protesters into unmarked vans and not giving them information about what was going on. You think they're really going to pay this fine? <laughs> Maybe they were going to Disneyland. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, many Christmas. All right. Shohei Otani homered in his first plate appearance since being shut down as a pitcher. Dylan Bundy struck out 10 in the third. L.A. beat the Mariners 6-1 on a game heard here last night. They'll continue on, and the Colorado Rockies come to town for a three-game set. 5.30 pregame, 6.40 will be the first pitch tonight. Tomorrow, Colorado at 6.10, and Sunday, Colorado, nice afternoon game for you here on AM 1030 and FM 1033. And a big thanks to our super sports sponsors who are providing coverage of the Mariners this year. The Roof Doctor, Arch Mechanical iFiber Communications, PUD number three, and Ascend Roofing. So more Mariners coming up, more conversation on the way as well here on a Friday morning. It's Daybreak. Good morning to you. From the iFiber One News Radio Studios, you're listening to Daybreak. And good Friday morning to you here. The Daybreak Show rolls on. Again, a reminder, no Dr. Apostle on the air today. He's uh, off on some personal business here, but we will check in with him next week and are scheduled to have a in-depth conversation with him um, on Facebook Live about the restart of school. And that's, again, coming up later next week. We're finalizing those details, but we'll get you the information. Morning, Spencer. How are you doing? Hey, TGIF. How are you doing? Well, uh, TGIF, indeed. We're looking at the days. We like to look at these every so often. There's kind of fun fun ones. Today is International Beer Day, so if you're a fan, you know, Mm. enjoy. And uh, it's also National Water Balloon Day, so maybe if uh, you end up having too many of those beers, (laughs) kids can throw water balloons at you to kind of wake you up in the afternoon. I don't know. Have you seen those pranks? Tomorrow, though, is... (laughs) The water balloon? Which ones? Like, people will bake a a muffin, and then they'll stick a... uh, Or they'll make a cupcake, and they'll put a water balloon on top, and then put frosting over it, and then video the person biting into the cupcake and the water shooting all over their face i have not seen yeah, that i'm a child oh that's tiktok maybe trump should ban it that is it's why you know <laughs> so we talked about that yesterday tiktok and the whatever the new instagram thing is my theory on why he's so upset about tiktok is because those the kids on there <laughs> punked him with that rally do you remember that? I mean, they were like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a rally, and we've got a million tickets sold to this rally. And then the next thing you know, there's like 6,000 people yeah, no, in I the remember stands. And, and the, the, the word was that the kids on TikTok shared with the other kids on TikTok that, you know, you go to the Trump website and you can get free tickets to this thing. So why don't you order eight and then... It makes it look like he's going to have a ton of folks. And wouldn't it be funny when nobody shows up? It was more clever than what half the adults do. (laughs) It's pretty clever. That is true. I mean, I just 
again, you talked with one of the, a higher up from TikTok. Yeah, yeah. And did you did you ask him about this? I mean, I get that it was made in China, but what what's the big concern? Is that the the data flow could possibly go through? Yeah, I've never really been clear. Or, we didn't bring that up, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm not totally clear of all the things. I mean, we could have spies on the ground. You know, I mean, I don't know that they would use an app well, used sure. primarily by teenagers and young people. I mean, that. I mean, what what information flow do they have? I mean, the average person on TikTok is probably 14 years old. I don't know. I mean, I I don't know. It's interesting. It's just bizarre. It. Well, tomorrow there's some real interesting days, kind of some fun ones. It's bowling day, so we're not going to be able to do that. Maybe you can go lawn bowling. Yeah. It's a garage sale day. I have been to a garage sale since the pandemic started, uh, and I'm seeing more pop up. Wear mm. your mask. Yeah. Tomorrow is National CBD Day, and oh. then it's also coincidentally National Happiness Happens Day. Oh, I'm not sure if those are combined. <laughs> Could and be. we must be nearing the end of uh, summer grow season because it's also tomorrow national sneak some zucchini into your neighbor's porch day. I don't know if you've ever grown zucchini, but it gets out of control and you are just by the end of the summer, you're like, hey, how are you? you oh, yeah. some zucchini. I mean, if any if anybody makes eye contact with you. You're I always wonder zucchini. that. I always wonder that because I had a coworker years ago that would bring the biggest zucchini like these mutant zucchini into the lunchroom yeah. and leave them there so that's what yeah. it is I, you end up with a lot of them you're trying to get rid of them yeah because oh. you know you're you're starting your gardening and so you throw some zucchini seeds down you're like oh, yeah that'd yeah. be fun and then they get they they do they get out of control oh, i wow. mean they're sometimes they're the size of uh arnold schwarzenegger's arms <laughs> no know? this like one was huge i couldn't believe it it made they're gigantic it made like five loaves of uh zucchini bread that one alone i think yeah yeah, so that's what's so. If you find some zucchini on your porch tomorrow night or Sunday morning, that's what it is. The other one that is, it's a brand new one. It's just starting. It's called Global Sleep Under the Stars Night, and this is the first year they're doing it. Uh, I think kind of Eddie Bauer put it together, but it's an idea to get out and sleep under the stars. And you're doing that and facing some fears, aren't you? Oh yeah. Uh, I'm going on my first ever. I was invited, and I've always said no, kind of like with jury duty. Anyway, I get invited, and then I kind of cop out. But um, I was invited to my first Bigfoot expedition. Now, before people laugh, these are like really, really skilled researchers in Washington State. (laughs) I mean, these are some of the the best people in the Sasquatch, you know, squatching business. And so I'm, I'm in good company. I'm the neophyte. I don't know what I'm doing, but I don't like, as you know, the woods at night. I, I'm scared of them during the day, but at night it terrifies me. I'm not afraid of running into Bigfoot. I am afraid of mountain lion, bears, people, coyotes, chupacabras, things like that. So I don't know what we're going to run into, but I don't plan to sleep Saturday night after work. I work nine to five Saturday. I'm getting in the car, driving about an hour to this location. And I'm going to try to just beef up on coffee or caffeine of some sort, but I, I don't plan to sleep and I'll sleep Sunday. That is going to be, that's going to be a lot of fun for you, regardless of what happens. Um, y- you know, the middle of the state is ha- heavily forested and there have been over the years, plenty of sightings yeah. of, Bigfoot. So, you know, it'd be really interesting. And it'll be interesting when you're with the experts, because like, if you and I went and did that. Yeah. And Stephanie is <laughs> I laughing. The, I heard the laugh. <laughs> while, we're, while we're talking about this. If you and I did, it'd be a um, reality show. It'd be cool. If we, if you and I did this, you know, it'd be like every stick that broke. It's a squatch, would man. be. You heard a squatch. It's a squatch. It would be something. I don't even know if I would make it. You know, I saw this tiny sort of here. And- <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't make it through it through midnight. I, uh, I saw a little creature with a, a furry tail and big brown eyes. It was a squatch. No, it was really. It was like six it inches big. A, it was a mini squatch. It might have been a mini squatch. You know, I would I would force myself to be out there 
at least the amount of time it took to drive. But <laughs> after that, I'm ready to go. I don't, you know, you start hearing things out there. You know, this is a dumb I fear to well, have. Man, I tell you what, <laughs> this is a dumb fear. I want to try to let nature do its thing before I get there. It's kind of like uh, field trips when you're a kid and you're embarrassed to be the one going to the bathroom all the time. I have, uh-huh. I have never, okay, in the woods before, even in our own woods, uh-huh. I don't want to start like Saturday night. I'm so scared to death. My stomach's going to say, you have to go to the, you know, do the thing, nature calling. And then I don't know. Well, just don't. I don't know how to do it. Just don't stop at AM, PM and get like a chili dog or something (laughs) like that. I have to watch YouTube videos. I watch YouTube videos. Rough night. Don't how to do it. (laughs) That would be a rough, rough night. Well, my only advice would be to grab a couple of sturdy sticks and work on your tree knocks. Because yeah. you don't want to be walking into somebody's property that is not yours. Yeah, there's a squatch That'll right be a there. lot of fun. There's a squatch holding a, a shotgun. For, for everybody else who is deciding to not face their fears, <laughs> perhaps just sleep in your backyard. Why don't you start there? <laughs> We're okay. always under the More stars. Daybreak right? show. <laughs> More Daybreak Show coming up. You're listening to Daybreak on i Fiber One News Radio. Again, good morning to you. The Daybreak Show rolls on here this Friday. The weekend is coming up here. Good morning, Spencer. Hey, hey, what's going on? Good morning. Well, we're just taking a look here. It's been, um, well, I guess it's been a full week now since the uh, lapse in the additional $600 federal payments to those unemployed uh, or furloughed. And, um, you know, we had talked to city manager Jeff Knight, and he thought that the, that money is a very helpful for folks to spend money in the city for the sales tax, for the revenue to come in, uh, because a, a lot of the city money comes in on sales tax. You know, our state yeah. is a sales tax based state. There's no income tax here. Uh, so that additional money was helpful. There's a new survey out that says one in four Americans have missed a bill payment since the virus began. It is uh, hurting Americans' wallets. And according to a new survey, it is uh, taking a toll on our finances. One in four saying they've missed a bill payment. 2,000 Americans commissioned by the Energy Bot website shows cell phones and cable bills are the most common payments missed with about a quarter of folks admitting to that. Um, You know what you talk about Maslow's hierarchy, you know, you talk about water, uh, food and Mm -hmm. shelter as being the mains. And then, you know, you got to take care of those things and cell phones, although vitally important with less and less landlines out there but cable you know things like that oh yeah absolutely uh, huge bills i mean they can be i mean three of our kids got their own cell phone bills they're paying their own cell phone bills and man what a relief that is you don't realize how many thousands mm-hmm. of dollars you save every year by doing that once the kids are old enough to have their own cell phone accounts it's pretty cool one thing about this as i'm just we're just going to kibitzing here is that this this could be a good time if not if you haven't already to maybe go through and start doing your you know your monthly budget and seeing where your money is going like make sure it it you know listen we've been listening to dave ramsey on kmas for years now so that's kind of where I fall back on a lot of these things. But, you know, you make your budget, you plan where your dollars are going. You may find that you have subscription services or monthly reoccurring payments that you have, you haven't used in a very long time. And yep. this could be a great opportunity for you to cut back on those things um, to, to find find a couple extra dollars. Yeah, I remember way back in the day when Quicken was just like a new word to people. And Mm -hmm. you remember the early days where what we would do is we would grab our receipts. I mean, even if we just bought a muffin somewhere. And I remember religiously inputting every receipt, category, subcategory, and then that big pie chart showing rent, mortgage, 
doctor bills, you know, mm-hmm. how many muffins, how many cups of coffee. And then you realize, boy, this hobby is really expensive or I'm spending a lot on eating out or entertainment, things like that. Things add up and it's a good way of seeing where that money goes. It just because you sign up for something once and the trial period is over and mm-hmm. you forget about it and you use the service, you know, very limited. It's um, when we did that and really kind of wrote down where everything was going. It was very surprising because we didn't feel like, you know, we spend a lot of money at a coffee shop. But there are things that uh, it definitely adds up, you know couple bucks here a couple bucks there that could be a monthly payment oh yeah absolutely and then you think okay if i didn't spend that money maybe it could go over to this bill that i'm struggling with or even just kind of a fun fun for the family you know when all this is over maybe save up for a vacation or something sure yeah yeah you put a you you skip you skip a you skip something and you put those dollars into a jar and at the end of the month you see what you got and maybe you're able to do Something fun. Um, yeah. On this survey here, 63% of the respondents say they're always worried about being able to pay their bills on time nowadays. And 60, 58% say they've been stressed about their financial situation since the pandemic took hold. And as we go back to that $600 additional payments, I've seen studies and reports on both sides saying that it is definitely important to have that money because it helps in uh, keeping the economy going. I've also heard studies that say, you know, it's a deterrent to go back and find work. Um, so, you know, it take you can take those from both sides. But regardless, there is not a lot of extra money flowing in our economy right now. And the fact that, you know, cities and states can't run deficits, the feds are going to have to very soon figure something out. Don't you agree? Yeah, something's got to happen. And they're showing kind of what people are cutting back on, which affects everything. As you said, Uh, 39 percent have 86 their gym memberships. 30, And that's that's a double blow to gyms because of the whole spacing thing we talked about a few days ago on how it's getting harder and harder to maintain that space in the gym. So that's hard enough. And then people are just kind of saving Uh money and not even having their gym memberships anymore. 38% cut back on their paid streaming services. Uh, So things like Disney Plus and Netflix and things like that. 35% stopped ordering food out to save money. And, of course, restaurants struggling right now more than ever. Exactly. It's a killer for the local restaurants. It's just tough. You, You mentioned Disney. Um, I saw that they finally have decided not to release Mulan into the theaters. It's going to be on Disney Plus, but it's going to cost you $30 to rent it. Did you read that? You know, that was actually, I saw that and they corrected it, but a lot of the media didn't correct that out there on the headlines. I saw that too and I go, wow, 30 bucks for a rental. I mean, how many times do you get to watch it before you return it? And it was a a miss print it meant to purchase it so it'll be thirty dollars but you download it digitally or whatever and it's yours to keep but yeah a lot of people were scratching their heads on that one i was like that's the most expensive movie rental of all time that is an expensive movie rental but i I, as i and i told stephanie about that and she says well i says you know if three people went to the movies and got popcorn that would be more than thirty dollars so maybe that makes sense but then Stephanie correctly, as usual, pointed out, well, we wouldn't even go see that movie anyways. So. You're right. <laughs> yeah. It's another one of those live action Disney adaptations. People are really trying to get their dollars to stretch. Now's the time I'm starting to look back up on, uh, you know, uh, for sale sites on things or looking to sell things again, which I know got very popular at the start of the uh, pandemic. So people may be going st- getting ready for round two of, of their purges in the house to, Mm -hmm. to see if they can keep up any money. It's just a really unsure time. And there's a lot of, a lot of balls up in the air here with school and, uh, upcoming, uh, presidential election in November. And then yesterday I saw a report and, you know, we can save this later if you, if you want, but I saw another report that says, okay, great. 
we're in the middle of summer. We're, we've been doing okay when it comes to our social distancing. And if you're going to be meeting with people, it's better to be outside because of the air disbursement and the particulates. Sure. But what happens, what happens in uh, late September, early October through the winter? Who's going to go mm-hmm. meet up at a park in the middle of winter? Yeah. That's going to be another, and and so that is going to be a tough one too when it comes to depression, oh uh, yeah, and more social inter- interaction and things like that. So I thought that was a fascinating. I read that article yesterday. It was talking about we're doing we're doing okay now, but what's going to happen when fall and winter come and, and nobody wants to go out? In, nobody wants to go outside. It's going to be Jack Nicholson and The Shining with the icicles coming off his chin. We're going to go out in the cold and freeze. Oh, see, I I thought you were going to go with uh, all work and no play. Yeah, that <laughs> makes, too makes uh, Spencer <laughs> a dull boy here. Just uh, that too. There's going to be a run on typewriters. I don't want to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, more daybreak. It must be a Friday. More daybreak show is coming up. From the iFiber One News Radio Studios, you're listening to Daybreak. And again, good Friday morning to you. The Daybreak Show rolls on here. The Colorado Rockies are in town. They got a 5:30 pregame and a 6:40 first pitch tonight here on AM 10:30 and FM 103.3. As mentioned, uh, no Doc Apostle today. He's off on some. Actually, has a I think a personal day off. So he's finally taking a little bit of time. For himself, and we'll be back next week as we're scheduling to have some conversation with him about the upcoming school year as well. Morning, Spencer. How are you doing? Hey, I'm all right. How are you doing? It was a couple weeks ago, maybe months ago now, as uh, time rolls on, but we talked a little bit about uh, mask knee. Mask knee. It is a, a, a concern now for a lot of folks, and this is when your mask, uh, you're starting to get acne around your face where your mask is usually. Yeah, and it's caused, uh, well, obviously by wearing all this stuff and just not a lot of good circulation of air and friction that we're not used to having constantly on our faces and stuff. There's a survey out by V, a skincare company, saying 46% of respondents say they've dedicated more time to skincare routines now. And this is because they're not rushing out of their home every morning. And nine out of 10 say their skin has improved under lockdown. So this is just their kind of in general day-to-day life. Uh, So when you're at your home, you don't need to wear your mask. Um, But then again, 245% credit drinking more water at home Mm -hmm. for better skin. And it's also less exposure to the outdoor elements, which That's is helping with skin care. You know, what's interesting, too, is I think a lot you everybody posted pictures, not myself, of course, being bald, but people with their hair being long and growing beards. Mm-hmm. And so it's interesting. Maybe this is like taking control of something you can control. You know what I mean? You don't need to go somewhere yeah. necessarily to get your skin worked on or, you know, people get facials and stuff. But as people's hair got long and kind of unruly for some people, all the attention that they would spend this, you know, maybe working on their hair, they kind of gave up on that, maybe put time into their, their skincare. As you wear your masks on a daily basis, if you're out and about, there is this uh, mask knee that can come from it. We found a Huffington Post article that has a couple facts and fictions about it. It says mask knee is caused by friction and that is how um kind of your mask is just rubbing your skin and continues yeah. to rub so uh the friction there is a problem the other thing i know is that it really dries out when you're under under the mask area my lips dry out fast and kind of the area around my mouth if yeah. you don't have acne prone skin apparently you still though have to worry about mask knee because uh it's a lot of other factors. It may, in fact, be rosacea. Yes. A common skin disease that people have. Yep. And also, it can be, you can develop yeast infections from wearing the mask. A lot of people thought that wasn't true, but it is. And you can get it uh, 
I had what I thought was a yeast infection right around kind of where my mustache would be if I grew in the hair, you know, where it would just... Oh, yeah. It just seemed strange and not something I was used to, but there's over-the-counter treatments for that, like Lotrimin and um, even... Like they recommend Nizerol shampoo, which a lot of people use like for flaking and dry scalp. And that could be used for it as well. Just kind of a little bit topically placed in the areas, but you can definitely get a yeast infection from wearing a mask. Interesting thing too here about Vaseline like products can actually make things worse. Mask friction can lead to redness and irritation. But friction-reducing products can actually do more harm than good. Somebody may say, well, Vaseline or coconut oil or other greasy products will reduce the friction of the mask. But the problem with that is when you put that on your body, it actually blocks the pores and your hair follicles. So it's not able to get the, the fresh air on that. Yeah, and this is something we should point out because a lot of people may be doing this. I heard early on, you may have heard the same thing, that... People were concerned about, okay, I wear a mask. I can't necessarily, it's not practical to wash it every single day. Some people don't have multiple ones, you know, the, the non-throwaway kind. So some people were saying, put it out in the sun. Like, just leave it out, you know, on the bench in the backyard or something, and that'll kill the virus. There's very little evidence of that because the mm-hmm. UV rays that would kill the virus are mostly blocked, thankfully, by the ozone layer because if not... I mean, think about the prevalence of skin cancer already. If that stuff was getting through to the degree it would take to kill the virus, we'd we'd all be getting cancer probably. So don't think sure. leaving it out in the sun for a few hours is going to kill any you know virus that may be on the mask. Interesting, interesting. Well, it's uh, the new world we're living in, and it's stuff we have to adjust to. Again, more Daybreak Show continues on this Friday. Mariners are on the air tonight, 5.30 pregame, 6.40 first pitch. And a big thanks to our Mariners Super Sports sponsors this year, Ascend Roofing, PUD3, Arch Mechanical, iFiber, and The Roof Doctor. More Daybreak Shows coming up. Thank you so much for listening to today's Daybreak with Jeff Slakey podcast. Again, I'm so happy and honored you found us and chose to listen. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this with your circle of influence. It's a collection of some of the interviews, news, and conversation during Daybreak with Jeff Slakey on iFiber One News Radio KMAS weekdays from 6 to 9. Thank you so much again and talk with you next time.